Lord, everybody. God bless you. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Give God some praise here in the sanctuary. Let's go. Lord, I appreciate you. You've been good to me. You've been good. You've been good. You've been better than I've been to myself. My God, for without him, we are nothing. My God, it is through him and by him that we live, that we breathe, that we have our very being. That's why we praise him. That's why we live our voice. That's why we clap our hands. Jonathan Perry, my God, live and in full effect, my God, and we also have associate pastor, Maria Denise, lady, Maria Denise Perry, praise God, praise God, we're going to go into prayer, my God, if this is opening prayer, you can stand, you can lie down, you can sit down, but we ask that you pray some kind of prayer, my God, to let God know, Lord, I appreciate you. Amen. So we're going to open up today's service in prayer in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of your son, Jesus. We come, Lord God, for you said to come, Lord God. You said that men are always to pray and not faint. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, you told us to pray always. Lord God, and we realize, Lord God, that prayer... Lord God, is direct communication to you. Lord God, to let you know, Lord God, that we appreciate you to let you know. Lord God, that we love you to let you know that we are thankful. Lord God, and grateful for all that you have done for us, all that you are about to do and all that you are doing right now. You are our God, you are our Savior, you are our Redeemer. And oh God, this afternoon we thank you out of the depth of our hearts. Lord God, we want to give you honor. Lord God, and we want to give you glory today. Lord God, for you, you alone. Lord God, are our God. Hallelujah. My God, and without you, Lord God, we've already said that we couldn't do anything. And we just want you to know, Lord God, this afternoon that we are grateful. We just want you to know this afternoon that we are thankful. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, how you brought us down to this week. Uh, Lord God, without hurt, without harm, without danger, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I realize, Lord God, many have gone on before us this week. Uh, uh, but there is a reason why, uh, Lord God, we are still here. There's a reason why, Lord God, that we are able today to cry out to you there. And why, Lord God, that we're able to say thank you, Lord. Uh, there's a reason why that we're able, Lord God, to say, Lord God, that we need you. There is a reason why, Lord God, that we're able to say hallelujah, my God, and to cry out and to give you the highest praise. Uh, my God, we might not know the reason, uh, but oh God, we gather this afternoon to let you know, uh, Lord God, that we are grateful. To let you know, Lord God, that we are thankful. Uh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, uh, and oh God, find the way if we've done anything. Uh, Lord God, to breathe in and say in his sin, uh, and he does it with me, and he fall back, Lord God, and he trip up and he slip off. Uh, Lord God, we ask for your grace and your mercy. Uh, Lord God, we ask forgive us, Lord God, of our sins, uh, Lord God, in our shortcomings. Uh, ah, we read somewhere, Lord God, where you said you renew your mercies every morning. Uh, ah, so we are so grateful and thankful that you have renewed uh, your mercies this morning. Uh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, uh, and allow us to We thank you for family, we thank you for friends, uh, mother, father, sister, brother. And oh God, for relative, we thank you, Lord God. We even thank you for our enemies this afternoon. 
Whispers of love. 
nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the Son, let rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. On Christ the Son, let rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Let the church say hallelujah. Oh, my God. Precious Lord, take my hand. Leave me. Leave me. Oh, my God. Leave me. Somebody got to leave you. My God. What better way is to have God lead you? My God. And my hope, my hope, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. What are you talking about, preacher? A solid rock. You know what it is to have a solid friend and a, my, my, my God, somebody that's down for you a hundred grand, right? Jesus can be down for you a hundred grand. Because why? He's the solid rock. I stand. All of the ground is sinking. Sand. I'm not going to put my trust in anyone else but Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Amen. We praise God once again for you, you, and you. We see we had some, a couple of, who, 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 what? Where that microphone? I want to know who these young folk are just walked in. Hey, man. Tell us who you are, who invited you in Jesus' name. Is it on? Yeah. Uh, my name is Cedric Daniels. Uh, this is my wife, Robin Daniels. This is my son, Ray Lee. Amen. Uh, yeah. He uh, told me he was getting baptized, and one of the ministers um, right here reached out to my wife and uh, sent us an invitation. So uh, we decided to come on out. Hey, man. God bless you. God bless you. Well, uh, as we already introduced me, I'm Theron Daniels. Yes, my sister's All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. We thank God for each other. Pastor Jonathan Perry. I'm the senior pastor here at Resurrected Hope Ministries. Amen. And our associate pastor is Lady Maria Perry. My God. And now, my God, we praise God for you. We come to work the reason why we're really here today. Amen. Amen. And that's the word of God. The preach word. And we have someone who is more than capable of preaching the word of God. It seems like every Sunday that she has to preach. My preach is up high. And when it's my turn to preach, I'm like, oh, Lord, give me something in the name of Jesus. <laughs> praise God. But we praise God for Associate Pastor Lady Maria Perry. She is definitely qualified and yeah. sent by God amen. to preach and teach the Word of God. Let's give her a hearty amen. amen.
away. Uh, so we've been kind of dressing down a little bit. Um, so a few more weeks, and then we'll be back to our Sunday fest. October. Uh, in October. <laughs> Amen. So I told Pastor, I was like, I don't have any casual clothes. I'm like, I just, so y'all keep seeing the same old jeans. <laughs> That's why I said, Lord, I got some casual clothes. Uh, but we thank and praise God for you. Hallelujah. Well, I hope not to be before you very long because we do have a baptism today. Hallelujah. I feel like the angel is just sitting and waiting because you know the scripture says that all heaven rejoice over one soul that comes to Christ. I feel like the angels are on the edge of their seat. So I'm going to get out of the way. Hallelujah. But we believe we have a word from the Lord on this afternoon. Yes. All right. If you can stand to your feet for the reading of God's word and turn to, we've got two scriptures, um, Ephesians, the fifth chapter. That's in the New Testament. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And we'll read a couple of verses there. Then I have another verse in Isaiah. So Ephesians 5. Verses 25 through 27. Yes. And I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, oh, yeah. verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church mm. and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, yeah. that he might present it, it is the church, to himself a glorious church, Amen. not having spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. Amen. Uh, now read one verse in Isaiah, the 54th chapter. Isaiah 54. And I'll just read one verse, and that's verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband, uh -huh. the Lord of hosts is his name. Yeah. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, yeah. shall he be called. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that yes. you have prepared for your people. Yes. We thank you for every soul that came out to hear this yeah. word, oh thank God. You. Help us to hide it in our heart that we not sin right. against you, O oh God. Jesus. Let it be a week of call. Let it marinate in our soul. Let it connect. And Holy Spirit, we're asking you to draw all souls unto you. Yes, I surrender and I submit to you, Holy God. Speak through me the words yeah. of life. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, we thank and praise God again for the word that he has prepared. And I'm going to be coming from the topic, Jesus, I do. Amen. Jesus, I do. I got it. See, God relates the relationship that he has with us as a marriage. Amen. You hear terms throughout the Bible of his bride. Yeah. Or as we read here in Isaiah, he says, for thy maker is thine husband. And who is he? The Lord of hosts is his name. Yeah. And so the reason that God does that is because the marital commitment or the marital relationship it should be the strongest relationship or covenant relationship in the earth. Yeah. And so we want to take you through that process on a spiritual side as to how we get into covenant relationship with this God. Yeah. This is not something that we ought to take lightly, even though in the natural, now it seems as though marriage is an afterthought. Wow. It seems like marriage is like, oh, by the way, let's just get married. And now it's gotten to the point where people don't even want to get married. Yeah. They just yeah. figure we'll just shack together, we'll live together, and maybe if we make it okay. And it's right. just done very lightly. But God takes real, real importance, or he, he looks at the covenant of marriage as important. And so he does with you and I. Yeah. Now, this is not a gender thing. So just because God says he is coming back for his bride, gentlemen in the room, don't feel funny. Uh, He's just using these analogies because he wants to show us the importance right. of this type of covenant. That's right. Even back in the Old Testament, 
when Israel would fall back into idolatry, and idolatry means that they were serving idol gods. They weren't serving the one and true living God. Yeah. So they would bow down to statues, and they would bow down to things that were made of man's hands. And because that's the kind of worship that they were so used to for over 400 years, uh -huh. they found themselves going back to what they always knew. And God hated that. And he referred to it as adultery and fornication. Right. And adultery means that you are going after someone that is not your wife and uh -huh. not your husband. And that's what adultery is for the young people in the house. And fornication means that you are having sexual relations outside of marriage. God right. frowns upon it. He hates those things because he's like, I'm in covenant with you. I'm a jealous God and I'll have no other before me. Yes. And so when we go back to things that disappoint God, it's like cheating on him. Uh -huh. Amen. I want you to see this picture. See, God does not want us to become common law Christians. Yes. Come and on. we have too much of that in this day and age. And what we mean by common law is even in the natural. Common law means that you're not married, but you've been living like you were married. And so after about 10 years, the law in the land says, well, okay, we'll just consider you married. Yeah. Oh, that's a hot mess that man made up. Yeah, yeah. Because of Revelations 3 and 16, he speaks to us and he says, so then because thou art lukewarm, uh -huh. And neither cold nor hot. In other words, you haven't really chose me as your God. Right. You're right. neither cold nor hot. You're kind of in the middle. You got a little of God and a little of the world. God said, I will spew you or spit you out of my mouth. Uh -huh. How many of you know that when you expect a nice hot drink and someone gives it to you and it's lukewarm, you want to send it back. You want your coffee right. or your hot cocoa to be hot. Right. Well, that's how God feels when we as human beings are lukewarm when it comes to the relationship. Oh, so how, yeah. Pastor, do you know that you're, in a, you're a common law Christian? How do you know that you're not 100% for God? Yeah. Well, you only yeah. want God for what he can do for you. That's uh -huh. number one. You only want God when you want something. Uh, yeah. uh, but you're not willing to give up your life for him. Amen. You're not willing to do what he is asking you to do. Uh -huh. That's why the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. Uh, and so God is telling us, no, don't be a common law Christian. And yeah. You only want God for what he can do for you. And then when your needs and your wants are fulfilled, you don't want to have anything to do with God. Uh -huh. What else is a trait of a common law Christian is you only want God in a time of crisis. Uh -huh. Oh, when things are going bad, now you want to pray and now you want to run to the church. Uh, uh -huh. I was looking at the calendar. This happens to be September 11th. And I said, yeah. it's amazing when there are tragedies in the earth, all of a sudden people begin very spiritual. Yeah. I remember September 11, we had groups gathering and prayer and the houses of God were full and all of a sudden people were really religious and forgiving and the white and the black and the red man was all together and all this yeah. love because there was crisis in the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but when now September 11 appears to be so far away, especially for those of us that didn't lose anyone personally uh -huh. in this tragedy, now all of a sudden, where, is the, where are the gathering of the saints? Where yeah. are the prayers? Where are uh -huh. seeking God for comfort? Amen. We My forget God. once the crisis is over. That's a common law Christian. Or what happens when you're a common law Christian, it means that you only come to the church and church events, but there's no true commitment. Wow. Outside of church, there's no real commitment in your lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of a church program, you're not really in tune to God. Outside of maybe the two hours on a Sunday, maybe Christmas, New Year's, and Easter, then you don't even think about God. My God. Oh. Jesus. What else is a trait of a common law Christian? You drop God as soon as everything is going well in your life. Jesus. Oh, when you got your pockets filled with money, when your health is going right, yeah. when your children are children are acting right. Oh, now you don't need God. Ah, glory. Yeah. Glory. 
Yes, 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 yes. And then finally, a common law Christian trait is you don't want God to be Lord over everything in your life. Yeah. I once heard a preacher say, you know, uh, God, it's okay for you to touch all of this, but don't touch this. Yeah, she, like, yeah. don't bother me about this. This is what I like to do. Yeah, yeah. And so now we don't want God when he says you got to live holy. You don't want God if he says, oh, you can't live with that person that you want to live with. You don't want God if he says abstain from sexual pleasures. You don't want God if he, if he starts to lay down rules and regulations of holiness. Oh, I don't want you, God. Don't mess with that. Yes. Wow, but as long as you make it easy for me to walk with you and I can still live the way I want to live and do what I want to do and talk the way I want to talk, then okay, God, I'm for you. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, but in these last days, Come nobody on. really wants God to be Lord yes. over their lives. It's okay for God to be Savior. Yes. Save me, Lord. It's okay. Uh -huh. But then once he saves you, he expects you to make him Lord. That means I rule over your life. Yes. But we don't want that. We want God to stop and save you. Uh, I'm uh, saved. But I still want to rule my own life. Thank you, Jesus. But the Bible prophesies the day that we are living in right now. Yes. He prophesies. He says in 2 Timothy the third chapter. You need to read this. And I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation so that yes. we can kind of bypass some of the these and thous. Hallelujah. But I want to say this in plain English. This is where we're living today. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. He says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. The King James says perilous times. Yeah. For people will love only themselves and their money. Come on. They will be boastful and proud. Yes. Oh, does that feel like My today? God. My God. Scoffing at God. Yes. Oh, we yes. hear that today. Nobody wants to hear about God and Jesus Christian and the Bible. Disobedient to their parents. Oh, young people, young people. Be My careful. God. My God. And ungrateful. Aren't we living in an ungrateful? Society now, Jesus. nobody cares about what you do for them. Yeah. They will consider nothing sacred. Nobody considers the house of God even sacred. Anything goes. Jesus. Anything goes. Anything. I remember when we used to have reverence for the man and woman of God. Yeah. Now you'll cuss them up and down right in front of you. Wow. People used to hide the cigarette behind it. Oh, well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And hide the cigarette behind the back. Out of reverence. Not today. Uh, they will slander others and have no self control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. Mm. They will betray their friends and be reckless. They'll be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They're talking about uh, in the last days. Yeah, it sound yeah. like today. Yeah. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Right. Oh. Stay away from people like that. Right. That's what the Bible says is going to happen in the last days. That's why we continually say it is the last day. Yeah. So, so, I want to take you through the process of when you say, Jesus, I do. I want to give you a commitment, God. Because you haven't the, you haven't even begun to know God yes. until you're really a hundred percent committed. That's right. You haven't even begun to experience all that God has mm -hmm. until you're a hundred percent committed. Hallelujah. We don't want to be at the place that we turn away from what God has given us. God has made the ultimate sacrifice so that you can be free and experience all that he has for you. Uh -huh. When he sent his only begotten son to sacrifice in a place where you and I should have been, yeah. it was the ultimate love. Yeah. Yeah. He loves you and I so much that he says, I'm putting everything in place that you can make it. Yeah. God said, I'm putting everything in place to 
bring out the best in you. Yeah. God said, I even have put in place grace and mercy so that if you fail and if you fall and if you slip up, God is not here to crush you with a hammer yeah. or to sing you to hell because you messed up and you Amen. slipped up. Uh -huh. he, he said in his word that if you confess your sins, uh, that I'm faithful and just to forgive you of all sins uh, and lead you to righteousness. Uh, God is not so, uh, so high and powerful and mighty that he wants to see you fail. He yeah. said he's with you. He said I'll take you through all of the trials. Uh -huh. He said if you keep your mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. Uh, he has put all the tools in place so that we all can make it and we still turn our
Jesus is speaking, uh -huh. except the Father which has sent him, yes. sent me, draw him. Uh -huh. And I will raise him up at the last day. See, we really don't find God. He finds us. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. finds us. Uh -huh. Well, how does he find you? In church services like this, yeah, he starts yeah. to knock on your heart. Yeah. You feel that something in there. All throughout your oh. life, somebody has testified to you. Yeah. You may have stumbled across a television preacher. There may have been a witness somewhere that said something to you, and you yeah. fell a little something in your spirit. That's God tapping on your shoulder. Uh -huh. See, God is not going to make you come to him. He's got millions of angels to do that. Angels are commanded beings. But God said when he created man, he wanted man to have free will. Uh -huh. To freely come to him and say, I want God. Yes. Not just serving God because he commands it. To. Uh -huh. And so I'm here to tell you that God is not going to make you come to him. But he'll court you. Yeah. He'll, he'll kind of just you know be with you throughout the life and say, hey, I'm here. Uh, and you either turn away and keep going your way, or you say, hmm, okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you know how when, you know, the little boys, the little girls, you know, I like you. you know, do you like me, circle yes or no? <laughs> yes, I have some y'all re remember those days. But that's what God does all your life. Yeah. He gives you these little taps, <laughs> these little glimpses of who he is. My God. He's showing you who he is all your life. Yes. Some things happen and you don't even know it's God. You don't even realize that's God at work. Uh -huh. And he's slowly kind of get, trying to get your attention. Yeah, that's why the devil likes to keep up a lot of noise, chaos, and confusion. Yes. Because then you'll miss God all your life. That's why the devil loves to play in your mind because you'll miss the whispers of God. Thank you. Oh, but when you hear the word of God that tugs in your spirit when yes, you sit yes. in the services, that struggle is between your logical mind and your spirit man. Because the Bible says you can't even understand spiritual things with your natural and carnal mind. You're not going to understand it. That's why God didn't say, whosoever understandeth shall be saved. He said, whosoever believeth. Yeah. You got to believe it, and then God said, I'll open up your eyes and your understanding. But I'm not going to give you everything, and you're not even mine. Jesus. Oh, I'm not going to show you everything, and there's no commitment. Yeah. I mean, why would my husband give me the world before I said I did? Watch it. Crazy. <sighs> Come on, y'all. Yeah. So when you hear the word, that's like Romans 10 and 14. It says, it says, it says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Yeah. How do you even call on God if you don't even believe that he is the one and true living God? My God? That's why people that are serving other gods like Buddha and all these other gods, it's like they can't even get through Jesus because they don't even believe that he is the Messiah, wow. the Christ, the God that was saved. So until you even believe that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life, how, how, how are you going to make it to the next step? And then he says, uh, and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? When did you hear God? Mm. You heard God in every little thing in your life. You heard God through the preached word. You Come heard on. God on the tele-evangelist. You heard God in your private times when you were reading the word. Something leaked in your spirit yes. that you couldn't explain. That's God talking. My God. And then they said, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Wow. 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 It's the word. Wow. So for those of you that think I don't have to come to church, I can get to God all by myself, God is telling you not so. Not so. You got to hear the word proclaimed, broken down to you. Yes. God uses preachers. We are his mouthpiece in the earth. Come on. My God, you cannot eliminate that. Preach it. So when God calls you, what will your answer be? Will you ignore it? And go back to the loudness of sin. Jesus. Because that's a choice. God speaks. We compel people all the time. Come to the altar. Huh. What's your response? Your response is, God, I'm good. I'd rather do this. Uh, is that your response? Thank you, Jesus. Will you stay away from church because you don't want to feel this pull anymore? Uh, Jesus. That's what happens to many backsliders. 
because they tasted of this thing. They know what the right way is. They'll stay away from church because they yeah, don't they feel will. the conviction. I'm on a preach. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Or when you go on the defense, the defense to justify your wrong. Yeah. That's what we have in the world today. We've got oh. people that are now going on the defense. You preach a word and they want to tear it all apart. Because mm. it don't take all of that. Because I want to still do what I want to do. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. But when God proposes, in other words, when God says, will you come and join with me? Mm -hmm. He's going to have his hand out just like the guy that gets on the one knee and he says, will you marry me? He cannot make himself marry that woman until she gives him an answer. Come on. All right. All right. Now, you see why God compares a rela his relationship with us to marriage? God is calling on you. God is saying, will you come to me? Come on. But he's waiting on you to give him the answer. Yes, yes. You can't even move forward until you say, yes, God, I believe you're the one for yeah, me. Yeah. Until I said, yes, I believe this man is the one for me, we couldn't even move forward. Uh, There's a million other women out there. There's a million other men out there. Yeah. But it was that one that said, will you marry me? Yeah. There's a million religions out there. But one thing, when you listen to Jesus, when he says, will you yeah. marry me? Uh, uh, Hallelujah. So when God says, when God says, when God proposes, then we got to accept it. Yeah. Don't leave God down on one knee. Give him an answer. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, Mark 16, 15 through 17. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world. Yeah. Preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. God is sending out the clarion call. The gospel is going out. He's saying, whosoever will preach the gospel. Preach the Amen. gospel. But then verse 16 says, he that Uh, yeah. I know I'm setting you aside, 
And then I've got to move forward. Now it's time for the wedding. It is time to take on his name. It's taking on his name in a public ceremony. I'm standing before a crowd and we're exchanging vows and commitments to each other. And I take on his name. Well, in Acts 2 and 38, after preach, uh, Peter preached the word, uh, just like I am preaching today, uh, Peter preached uh, and he preached. Uh, all you do is have to read the entire second chapter. Uh, well, the people sitting in the audience, uh, their heart was pricked. Uh, in other words, they felt the pull of God. Uh, and they said to Peter, uh, he said, men and brethren, what must we do? Uh, I feel something in my spirit. Uh, so I want to know what do we need to do, Peter? Uh, with all that I'm feeling right now, uh, I'm showing interest to God. Uh, I want to know what this feeling is about. Uh, well, Peter said to them, uh, my God, he said to them, repent. Uh, and repentance means to change your mind. Uh, I want to live the way I've been living. Uh -huh. So I'm changing here first. Uh, so if I change my mind, uh -huh. then actions have to follow. Yeah. I, mean, I can't just say, I think he's my husband. Uh, I can't just say, I think she's my wife. Uh -huh. uh, actions have to follow. Uh, so then he says, and be baptized, uh, every one of you, uh -huh. uh, in the name uh -huh. of Jesus. Christ, uh, why for the remission or the removal of sins, yeah. uh, and ye shall receive the gift uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, well, look at baptism compared to marriage. Uh, in marriage, you stand before a public crowd uh, and you say your vows to one another. Right? Yeah. Well, in baptism, uh, you're getting in the water uh, before a crowd. Uh, my God, and the person speaks over you. Uh, Uh -huh. is consummate the 
physically. Uh, so that's what the Holy Ghost is. Uh, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God uh, coming into you uh, to dwell with you, uh, to be your master teacher, uh, to keep you, uh, to open your eyes to spiritual things. Uh, my God, in the name of Jesus, uh, the Bible says in Acts 1 and 8 uh, that ye shall receive power uh, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Uh, well, how do you know you have the Holy Ghost? Uh, don't count on a good feeling. Uh, don't count on, oh, this just is nice. Uh, well, the pastor told me I have it. Uh, no, you better have a supernatural experience uh, that can only happen with God. Uh, my God, the Bible says uh, that you would speak in other tongues uh, as the Spirit gives utterance. Uh, yes, tongues is a supernatural experience. Uh, yes, it's a real language uh, that is a language between you and God. Uh, yes, God, thank you, sir. Uh, oh, you need the Holy Ghost. Uh, you need the evidence of speaking in tongues uh, that qualifies that it is there. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, that when you say I do to Jesus, uh, you want the complete package. Uh, my God, you want every component uh, so that when you stand before God, uh, he can look at you and say, yes, check. Uh, you repented. Uh, yes, check. Uh, you went down and you took on my name. Uh, yes, check. Uh, you received the Holy Ghost. Uh, and you're now living in holiness and righteousness. Uh, because you don't want to get saved and then go back to living ungodly and unholy. That's like a married person going back to a single lifestyle. My yeah. God, I wouldn't want my husband hanging out in a club somewhere with a bunch of single women. He had to let go of that life in order to be married. And so it is with God. He says to us, be ye holy, for I am holy. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with so great clouds of witnesses. Let us, let us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12 and 14. He says, follow peace with all men and holiness. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And everyone that nameth the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. I'm here to encourage you that God gave us this salvation as a gift. But it is your choice. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Will you choose God or will you choose your old lifestyle? When you stand before God because you heard this message today, he's going to roll back today and he's going to say, what was your choice? Did you fight him? Did you ignore him? Did you with did you do with the word that he gave you? Yeah. And so that every man will be without excuse. You uh -huh. can't say you didn't know. You can't say you didn't hear. Right. God is saying the gospel will be preached through all nations before he comes. Take this as your warning yes, Lord. before judgment. Amen. Come on and clap your hands. Oh, Hallelujah. Jesus, I do. Jesus, I do. God is not this big, ugly. Yes, thank you, Lord. God that wants to see you destroyed. Yes. He really doesn't. He doesn't want to see you destroyed. My God. He made this way of escape for all of us because when Adam and Eve messed up in the garden, yes. it put a block between us and God. Yes. 
And God said, I got to do something about that. Something. God. And all throughout the Old Testament, the only way that we could get to God without our sins being a stench in his nostrils, we had to kill lambs and animals. Can you imagine us having to do that to beg? Uh, God. <laughs> Every time we messed up, we had to sacrifice something on the altar. Yeah. We ought to praise God for living in the day and age of grace. Yes. That if we have an issue, if anything happens in our life, God said, I've got grace and mercy because I was the last sacrifice. Jesus yes. was the last sacrifice. Uh, and it was like he put his blood up here for withdrawal. I so that now if you fail or fall, you just go to him and say, God, I did this, this, and this. Yes. Please forgive me. Wash me in your yeah, blood. Yes, Lord. And believe that you're forgiven and keep moving. Yeah. And if you fall again, ah, brush yourself off. Go to God. Yeah. Ah. Because what the enemy wants you to do is you sin and you feel condemned and you start sending some more because you messed up, so I might as well do That's something right. else. That's right. That's a trick of the enemy and a lie from the pit. That's right. Mm -hmm. God wants to see you succeed. Oh, and by the way, God said this. He said, do you know that as long as you're here on earth, you'll never be 100% perfect. Amen. So you know what he has? Justification. But that's in his hands. He knows where if, when it comes to heaven, if you just about this much, you almost made but you got about this much that still is some stains there. God said, I, I'll line it up. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. But he said, shall we continue in sin that grace may yeah. abound? God forbid. Yeah. In other words, what God is saying to you is, don't take his mercy and grace for granted. Yeah. Don't just go out here and sin willy-nilly because you got grace. That's right. No, no, no. That's right. Because you don't know where yours ends. Ah, uh, glory. glory. Some folks, they get away with a whole lot. God. Others, they do one little thing. Whoop, they come. Oh, man. Oh, man. Don't let that be you. Hey, oh, man. So I extend Christ to you. I preach the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Hallelujah. That was my assignment today. Thank you, Jesus.